Hey y'all, this lesson is on normal probability plots. And in my first video about normal curves, I mentioned the normal probability plot, but I never really went into it. So in this lesson, I'm gonna teach you how to make one, what they mean, and how they can assess normality of a variable. So it is pretty neat. I love using these to assess normality. I think you will too. So if a variable is normally distributed, the normal, normal probability plot will be roughly linear. So we're going to sketch this normal probability plot. And if it's roughly linear, then the variable is normally distributed. So that's why I mentioned you can use it to assess normality of a variable. A normal probability plot is a plot of observed values or observations is what I call them versus normal scores, which are like Z scores. A large sample. So a large sample is typically at least 30. So 30 or more observations. Uh, if it's large, then if the plot is roughly linear, then we can say that the variable is approximately normally distributed. If the plot is nonlinear, that means it has some curvature to it, a lot of curvature to it, then we would say the variable is not considered approximately normally distributed. So there's several ways that you can draw a normal probability plot or construct one, I should say. Um, obviously, you can do one by hand, and I am going to show an example of that. You can also do it in Fathom really easily. So if you've downloaded Fathom onto your computer, um, I have a picture down here of what that looks like, or you can use your calculator. So there's three different ways you can do it, and I will show you all of them. So if you have Fathom, then you're gonna drag down a table to input your data, and then you're also gonna drag down a graph, and you will drag your variable over to the graph, and then you will select right here from the drop down menu normal quantile plot. So sometimes books or programs or whatever call it normal quantile. Um, that's the same thing as normal probability. And then it will graph it, and you can kind of see here uh, it's got like a linear, uh, it's got like a line along the data. So you can see it is pretty linear. So we would say that this data is approximately normal. Or you can use, oh, sorry, I answered the questions down here. Um, does the variable look approximately normal? Yes, I've already answered that. Um, why? Because it is roughly linear. Follows a linear pattern, I should say. We'll say that follows a linear pattern, roughly. Not exact, but close. And I, I've showed this in previous videos. If you take a circle and, you know, circle your data, they're all really, in this case, really close together. And while it doesn't, you know, it doesn't follow an exact straight line, the pattern is linear. So that's how you can kind of decide. In your TI-84 or 3, um, you're going to have to input your data into the stat edit menu. Make sure that Y equals is cleared so that you don't have a line show up. Then go to second stat plot. That's where all your plots are. Um, turn on only the first one. And you're going to choose the sixth icon it kind of looks like a, a line a little bit or maybe a dot plot kind of but a linear dot plot basically and then um, you'll go to you'll choose this right here when it's the second list you're choosing which list that you put it in so if you put it in l1 it's probably defaulted to l1 and you don't have to change that but if you put it in like l3 or l4 you're going to have to go input that. You can actually, instead of doing this, you can just type in like um, second one 
is L1. If, or if you did second, two, that's L2. You can see the little blue L1, L2, L3 above the numbers. So if you put your list in a different, uh, or if you put your data in a different list than the default, you will have to change it by doing this. Uh, if it's if you put your data in L1 and the default is L1, then you don't have to change anything. And then you'll go to Zoom 9 to view the graph. And this is what it will look like on your screen. And you can kind of see it follows that linear pattern. So that's in your calculator. Um, it's the same type of process. You're going to go to Stat Edit, put in your data, turn on your stat plot, Zoom 9 basically, long story short. So uh, I, you can also do this by hand. And I want to show you how to do it by hand because I want you to understand where these seemingly random dots are coming from. Because if you're like me, if you've paused it and you're looking at this and you're like, where are these dots coming from? Because if you, if I gave you the data, the data doesn't match the dots. And it, it's like this, okay, it's not a scatter plot because a scatter plot would look different. It's not a line. What is this and where are these values coming from? Um, if you're not like me and you don't wonder that, I'm still gonna tell you. <laughs> so um, for me, it's just a natural curiosity. I wanna know why it is the way it is. And so uh, I'm gonna show you that so that you understand it uh, and that you know it's not just random. So basically, um, I have an example here in your textbook. If you have uh, at the front of the textbook, it's kind of like a glossy fold out thing. In table three, it has your normal scores. And what this is, what these values are, uh, they represent a normal population. And it's basically approximations of the Z scores. If you were to pull out a sample size of N, whatever N is. So in this case, um, N is the sample size. In this case, it's 12. We have 12 pieces of data in this example. So you would go to table three in your textbook and locate N equals 12 and go down. And I'll show you in a second. Um, and basically, you see all these numbers and you're like, where are they getting these numbers? Uh, at least I was. It seems like random numbers. I can figure out where they were coming from. And <clears throat> what's happening is they're basing it on if, a if you had a sample of that size based on um, a normal population, you should get Z scores with about these values based on those numbers. And um, if you use different textbooks or you look up different websites or um, they might be slightly different. So these are not like set in stone. They're just approximations. They're just saying for a sample size of this size n equals 12, these are the approximations for the Z scores you would get for these values based on a normal population. So um, what you have to do is first put your data in order from smallest to largest, and then uh, I'll show you the next step. So go ahead and pause it, put your data in order in this table, and then come back. I actually ran out of room a little bit on my table, but you should have 12 values in order on this side. I put check marks as I use the values because I get a little lost in which ones I've used, especially if some of them repeat. So then I want you to locate table three in your textbook and go to the column with n equals 12. And I want you to record the z scores in order of that column. So just go straight down the column. If you used table three, you should get these values for the z scores or the normal scores. And you might have noticed that it is symmetric. So we have, we start at negative 1.64, we go down to negative one, or up, negative 0.11, negative 0.79, negative 0.53, negative 0.31, negative 0.10, and then we go right back up symmetrically. So when I was doing this originally, I was thinking, well, it's going to have to be linear because we're going, it's symmetric. So we're going to have some below and some above um, the zero line, but if these are not 
spaced like these, then it may not be linear. So we're going to plot these points on the graph over here. Uh, if you have the notes, I did not include this in the PDF. I drew this uh, afterwards as I was preparing. So if you want to pause it and kind of draw that graph out, you'll notice that I labeled it. Uh, the bottom says the bill amount. The side says the normal scores. And you'll also notice that I put zero a little bit higher because I am going to have some negative values. So I'm going to have some values down here and some values up here. Uh, it may not be linear. We're trying to see if it is. But uh, I want you to plot these points. So these are points. This point is over 15 down at negative 1.64. This one is over 15 down at negative 1.11 and so on. So plot all of these points and then see kind of what it looks like and then come back and check with me. So if you plotted it by hand, it should look roughly like this. Um, minor estimations, so they're, this should be pretty close, but you can see that it does look pretty linear. I mean, we've got these two out here that kind of go off a little bit, but based on the spacing of these values and the z-scores associated, the approximate z-scores that are associated with them based on a normal population, that it ends up being roughly normal, which means that this variable is normally distributed. Um, you can also use your calculator to just kind of uh, check that. So I want you to practice that. Go ahead and pause it. Um, try it either on your calculator or Fathom just so you can practice using those tools and see if it matches this. Pause it, come back, and we'll share. If you did it on your calculator, it should look very similar to what we drew or sketched in the graph. And I did it in mine and they look really close. So I am going to say that this is roughly normal. And I was just really curious about the numbers behind it. And one of the things that we use to assess skewness about distributions, if you recall, is we compared the mean and the median. And when something is normally distributed, the mean and the median are pretty much equal, not too, like they're really close to being equal. So I was curious about that and I looked up the one variable statistics on the calculator and the mean was like 47 and the median was 47.5. So that does, that's kind of like a, a check. It confirms that this is normally distributed if you were concerned about this, these little uh, ones kind of outside of it and you're like, eh, I'm not sure, then you could use the one variable statistics to compare the mean and median and you would see that they're really, really close together, not completely equal, but really close together. So that confirms our um, estimation that these are approximately normal. So um, we could draw this little sketch down here just so that we finish the problem. We kind of have a little bump and then it kind of goes up like that. That's a really bad sketch, but I've already drawn it above, so it's okay. And we would say that this variable, um, cell phone bill amount is approximately, prox, whoops, approximately normally distributed because it follows a linear pattern. So uh, down here, I have two examples of variables that were plotted or graphed on a normal probability plot. So I want you to take a look at those and decide which one or if they both are normally distributed or not. You should find that this one follows a linear pattern. This one has some definite curvature about it. So this one is a yes, this one is a no. Not too bad. That's actually all for non normal probability plots. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please let me know and I'll be more than happy to help. See you in the next one.